Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I'm Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Uh, today, we are going to welcome in one of our franchise partners, and this is one of the they're in one of the very few niches in home service that really is largely untapped. Like most home service, it has a low investment, low overhead, and huge potential. This franchise also comes with both recurring revenue and the chance to work on some big projects. It's B2B, it's B2C, and then throw in the fact that it is an environmentally conscious franchise and you have really a one-of-a-kind opportunity. Sounds pretty cool, right? Before we get to them, here's us, as always. Fran Coach is a national search firm. We are dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with well over 600 of the top franchisors in the country, spanning nearly 70 industries. Our goal is to help clients find the absolute best franchise for them to own. And the goal of the Franchising 101 podcast is to help properly educate people on franchise ownership. All right, so that's a little bit about us. Now let's get to the important stuff, our guest. And our featured franchise today is called Conserva Irrigation. And our guest is not just some random person with this, founder, CEO, all things to all people at, at Conserva, Mr. Russ Junt. Russ, thanks for joining us today. Tim, thanks so much for having me on. It's a complete pleasure and great to catch up with you. Always, always good to chat with you as well. And uh, want to very excited to hear all about Conserva because I think again, it's it's something that is all the different home services out there that have you know like multiple different things or similar franchises. Um, you guys have a unique positioning in uh, do, doing things very differently um, in in a market that you really can kind of dominate. So we've got a bunch of questions about Conserva, but franchising is about people. And I always love hearing stories of, of kind of their journey into this. So walk us through a little bit, just kind of your your past. How did you even get into franchising and how did that kind of turn into Conserva? Yeah, it's awesome. And there's behind uh, every uh, uh, company, there's a story, right? And we have quite the uh, story here at Conserva Irrigation. 18 years ago, uh, I uh, actually was the first franchise owner with my business partner, Tom, in Minneapolis, we we're the first franchise owners of Mosquito Squad. Brand new company, brand new category, right? It had never been private mosquito abatement. And Tom and I were in the underground utility construction business. And we were doing uh, kind of big toys, big boys type stuff where you're dr directional drilling, bringing in fiber, fiber to home projects. And we had dabbled in irrigation and uh, had some smaller equipment, some smaller crews, and some folks thought that maybe we'd We'd like to get into that and so we had dabbled with it for maybe four five six years didn't see the real value of it i didn't like it personally because of seemed like in minnesota we love our water of course and seemed like it was uh, wasteful of water there wasn't a whole lot of thought going into it's it very commoditized of course very fragmented and uh, so as quickly as we we're in irrigation we we got back out of it and just focused on our core which was underground utility construction but at that time we were looking to diversify and get direct to consumer and we happened across Mosquito Squad. And like I said, that was 18 years ago. Scott Zide is our CEO today of Empower Brands and Scott was the co-founder of Mosquito Squad. So we met literally 18 years ago. In fact, one of my peers here in the office, Rich Young, who heads up outdoor lighting perspectives, that was his first week in the office. So that's when we had met as well. So it's just funny how it all came together. Well, the first four years of Mosquito Squad were absolutely fantastic. Still today, I'm a franchise owner. But after that first four years, I thought, man, this is so great. It was my first go around with franchising, not in business by yourself, right? Uh, certainly for yourself, but not by yourself. And the first time that there was a group that was helping us and absolutely loved it. And so I looked to my business partner, Tom, and I said, you know what? We ought to go buy another franchise let's look into irrigation there seems to be there should be a play there and of course tim we found out there wasn't any such thing right so behind that became the whole the whole mission and i studied like crazy uh the market the irrigation industry and it's a very old and antiquated industry that uh, is lacking in sophistication but i was enamored with the fact that they were just starting to make some movements towards smart irrigation and being being efficient with water. And to me, that was music to my ears. 
And so Ruli became a student in the industry for about nine months, went to my very first Irrigation Association national show, it was in Phoenix, yeah. right? So right about where you're at. And uh, I loved it. I fell in love with it. And I thought, man, this is fantastic. Gathered a bunch more data. And then at that point, founded the company in December of 2010 and went on this journey. And from there, ultimately, um, started building the proof of concept in the Minneapolis market, started our first shop in August of 2011, first 90 days with a, with a single page um, uh, kind of stagnant uh, website and a bunch of yard signs. We had 305 customers oh in 90 days. And so I knew we were onto something. People wanted service, they wanted help, and they wanted green, lush, healthy lawn and landscaping if they could do it in a way that was efficient. Uh, that was fantastic. And then from there, just started building out the model. And by December of uh, 2016, we had enough proof of concept. We'd opened up a bunch of pilot locations. And I partnered with, at that time, Outdoor Living Brands and, uh, and then uh, now Empower Brands today. And we franchised. And here we sit, what, not even seven years later at 77 awesome locations. We're in 32 states. We're knocking on the door at 50 million in revenue. It's just been a blast. And I think, and you said 2016, I'm like, gosh, it's been that, it's been that long. Right. So, um, which is, which is crazy. So you mentioned something with your journey getting into as a franchise owner. So I want to come back, kind of come back to this because, and as, as you know, you'll run into people and we'll look at Frank, we'll show them franchises and, you know, here's one, you know, they've been around for 20 years. They got 500 locations. Here's one with 10 locations, right? Um, and being that kind of early adopter is kind of scary because you're just, you don't have a lot of data, right? From 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 a historical perspective. How did you guys come to the conclusion? You're like, you, you weren't like franchisee number 11, 20, you were number one, right? Yeah. So talk about some of the things that kind of led you to have that confidence because it was your first franchise. To be able to go, hey, we we can be, we believe in this, we can be number one, first first one to kind of lead the ship on this. What was that like? Yeah, I'll tell you. Well, the, the culture here is is, is again um, at Empower Brands is one that is um, we we foster creativity, we cro we we foster um, people and and what people and, and the power that people can have when they get together and and we value that right and we really champion the success of all of our people here as 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 members of the staff but also all the franchise members and the reality at the end of the day is our our uh, the founder of outdoor living brands and and uh, former ceo now chairman of the board at empower chris grand prix he, 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 you know, I, we learned a very, very important message back then. He said, well, Russ, every single year now, Tim, I said, boy, Chris, I think we have enough data. We should franchise this model. He's like, no, you've proven that you can do it in one market, your market. Not everybody's Russ. Can you do it in multiple markets? So then I went to a couple other markets and expanded uh, doing pilot franchises, right? Not not um, selling them, but gifting them, but they had to invest, of course, in the in the people and the staff and the marketing and all that good stuff to get proof of concept. So I was in two or three, Chris, we've got enough information. Let's do it. That's great, Russ, but we want to see AUVs increase. We want to see profitability increase. We need more. So I kept going across the nation and finally down into Florida, and we had nine locations in total. Everybody else was doing even that much better than we did in our pilot location in Minneapolis. And, and at that point is that's when that's when the green light was given. Russ, uh, you know, here's the deal: we're not going to ever ever franchise a model on the back of of an investor, on the back of a candidate or a prospective franchisee using their funds. We're going to vet it out with our funds first, make for sure that the unit economics are absolutely solid, favorable to the franchise owner, and from there we're going to build a great validation story multiple locations we're going to build upon that story and that's really how uh, we started out and we were the first ever we didn't invent the category irrigation but we were the first to market and the key i think you know it as well as i know it tim first to market a, is a powerful play yeah. because you're you're competing against those that right have commoditized the experience those that have they're very much the fragmented experience and and from that we know we can run up the score and that's what we've done yeah, no, it's awesome. So talk a little bit about, um, and I definitely want to come back to talk a little bit more about Empower just in, in general, but 
So let's go to the basics. Conservate irrigation. I'm not super smart, but I'm going to guess the business has something to do with irrigation, right? So um, from a consumer perspective, um, talk a little bit about what con what Conservate is doing and kind of, and again, there's some very key differentiators with this. So kind of walk us through that first. Yeah, big time. So landscape irrigation first is the key to, to everybody jumps in. Hey, you guys do golf. Do you do agriculture? We don't. We do all the homes around golf courses. That's key. And we do the HOAs and all that good stuff. But residential and commercial landscape irrigation, sprinkler systems, right? I want to clear the deck. Okay. First things first, nobody in their right mind goes into irrigation on purpose, okay? That's just, unless they have a head injury, nobody's gonna <laughs> flip through the side deck and go, man, that's got my name. Every spouse is gonna question their, their husband or their wife and say, what are you thinking? Now, that was before there was a business model behind it. So keep in mind, like all, uh, all companies, right, that, that we, we build here at Empower Brands is, we're a marketing company. Okay, that happens to be in the irrigation space. And the irrigation space for which we live is landscape irrigation, both residential and commercial. And on the residential side, again, it's, it's all about efficient irrigation. How do we deliver water effectively, efficiently, so that consumer can have what they desire, green, lush, lawn, and healthy landscapes. And from that, right, repair and upgrades, of course, uh, standardized maintenance packages, installation, of course, we do the best, right? And uh, set out like anybody else, uh, unlike anybody else, seasonal packages so that recurring revenue, which is a big, big part of our model, you're not an employee as we're coming up on January 1st. And uh, in everything and everything around the uh, residential side of what we do is all driven by our marquee product. And the product is, of course, we've productized the service and the service is driven on an SES, a free inspection, a system efficiency score. So what it does is it quantifies, it first, of all, first off, it justifies the experience to the consumer. Here's a professional company that have got an SOP and, and we, they have a very homogenous approach, right? Yard to yard, consumer to consumer, tech to tech, et cetera. And it, and it justifies that they've made the right decision. It quantifies what, how many problems they have, and then it monetizes it for them. And it puts it out into report that this is what we need to do today. Here's what we're going to focus on as we get better as far as different system uh, additions and design changes. And then we're going to get into even more efficiency, smart controllers, and kind of sort of that fun stuff. So we take care of the residential side of it. And then we have a very similar program, a little bit more robust on the commercial side of it, where we develop not an SES, but a, a CSA, which is a commercial site assessment. Nobody's ever cracked this nut. We built a proprietary algorithm. You pick the you pick the the commercial property, the HOA, the small bank on the corner, anything in between, anywhere across the U.S. and Canada, and we've dialed in this algorithm that we know exactly how much water they've used because public water, right? Water is public data. And number two is this algorithm will show how much on any given year on a, on a on an average year, right, how much water they should be applying to that property. And that gives us a baseline. And from there, we can we can find out why they're not meeting that, what types of repairs need to go into it, what the expense will be doing it. And most importantly, for the commercial owner and the HOA presidents and boards, what's the time for the return of investment, usually 18 months or less. So it's fantastic. Remember, we talked about being first to market. Right. Think of the average dude or dudette going down the road, maybe a magnet on the truck at best, right? right? Are they having that type of sophisticated chat with the with the homeowner association board, with the sustainability board at, at uh, one of the companies across the U.S.? And the answer clearly is no. Is Conserva doing that all day long? So we, we really have the landscape irrigation both on the residential and the commercial buttoned up. And now we're just getting into another form of water management, which makes perfect sense for us. It's an underserved category, and it's a, what I call, I've coined it, adaptive drainage. Okay, so taking the water from downspouts, moving it in and away from those, from the uh, basements, from the crawl spaces, from the slabs, 
instead of ruining the, the plant material and or the mulch and the, the rock around that house, moving that water, managing it and uh, getting it away from that house. So again, a, a highly underserved market works out perfectly because our folks are already there, boots on the ground. Hey everyone, I wanna pause the show for a moment to spotlight one of our premier franchise partners, Superior Fence and Rail. If you're looking for a standout franchise opportunity that is dominating an in-demand niche, look no further than Superior Fence and Rail. As the first fence installation franchise in the United States, this brand boasts over 50 territories in 15 states and literally installs millions of feet of fence every single year. Superior fence owners can jump into the business full-time from the start, but they can also start out as semi-absentee owners. You can begin with a single territory or build an empire by owning multiple territories. As part of the Empower brand suite of franchises, Superior Fence and Rail owners are equipped with unmatched support and proprietary technology that sets them apart from what amounts to be really very fragmented competition. Superior Fence also has numerous partnerships with well-known home improvement retailers that will provide products at a reduced cost, which helps increase your margins as an owner. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Well, if you'd like to learn more about becoming a Superior Fence and Rail owner, reach out to the Fran Coach team today so we can help create your better tomorrow. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this, then I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcasts, webinars, and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. Yeah, so I, I I love I love all of that, and I think two things pop into my head. One, I want you to talk about kind of the owner and the things that they're doing, but your your point to like I think probably in franchising in general, kids aren't sitting there going, "Mommy, Daddy, someday when I grow up, I want to own an irrigation franchise." Right? It's it's what people end up owning is rarely anything on their radar, right? And so it's again super cool that you kind of bring that up, but the there are times people will come in, come to us and they have like a little bit of a tech background or they really like things that are tech related. Therefore, I need a business that is tech related. Like some of the things you're talking about, like you're different. One of the many differentiators is Billy Bob and his beat up pickup truck, man. Like he probably doesn't even have an iPad he's rolling in there with, right? Let alone like being able to do that um, at that level is just, I mean, again, that's a, an enormous differentiator. So um so super cool. So tell us a little bit about the the owner, right? And I know there's a couple of different ways this can get built out, but um, if I'm looking at potentially becoming a conservative irrigation owner, I'm going to go. But Russ, like, I'm not very handy. I can I can't build anything, right? I, I I'm not good at that. I don't want to do that. No way I can own this, right? What do you? But 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 we you and I both know that's not true. So walk us through what you guys are really kind of looking for and some of those key things an owner is going to be doing on the daily. Yeah, you got it. So first off, let's back up to the industry itself, right? Remember, been around for a long time. Nobody goes into irrigation on purpose. It's Hotel California once you're in and they kind of grow up. You either grow up in the business or you don't until Conserva. Conserva is the first of its kind to to be taking owners from outside, right? Or creating ownership, right? Taking people from outside with a with a whole storied past, a lot an eclectic background people with great business acumen, people that are more technical, people that have a love of the outdoors and a whole variety of folks, right, that don't know irrigation, 
but can apply those skills to a business model. So this is the first time ever our industry has experienced people coming from the outside with new being thought leaders, a new look, a fresh look, a new investment, understanding that it is marketing and not the technical side so much, right? And so we're bringing a big wave into that. Now, they also need people to work with and for them, right? Technicians. This is also the first time that we're bringing people from outside the industry into the industry because the, the, the pool from which we fish is limited as far as the number of technicians out there. And as we know, there can be some bad, bad uh, eggs in that, right? And there's some folks with some, with some poor habits. So we created the first ever, our industry does not have this. We, we uh, invested in it. We created, we call it our LMS system, right? Conserva University and uh, Career Tech Academy was formed, right? Where we, it's a 22 module online module training session that can take somebody just like you with let's limited irrigation experience or no limited irrigation experience with a desire to learn, desire to be autonomous, maybe work in their own van, loves to work outdoors. In 30 to 60 days, we can train them up through the online LMS system and also a series of, of uh, ratifying what they've learned in the field. 30 to 60 days, they can be in the field earning an income for themselves, earning an income for and with that that business owner, that franchisee, right. and uh, and handling 85 to 90 percent of the irrigation challenges. The last 10 percent they're going to learn, of course, on that job. So we've been able to take a whole fresh perspective, bringing people into it. So that's the biggest thing that we want to cover is, is again, it's not the so much the uh, the end result of being in irrigation is what type of business, what's the size and scale, what's the bottom line, how are you going to impact your family, and what type of wealth are you going to grow by using this, this vehicle? Yeah, it's, it's like we talk a lot to our clients as we're trying to figure out what, what business model to show them. You know, are you better with really highly skilled people? Are you better with more unskilled and train them? This is almost kind of a combo, right? You're able to bring somebody in fresh, right? Desire to learn and then give them through and again through the franchise model like here's all the stuff and now take somebody into like hey they're they're already now a technician right They've, you've helped them learn a skill hopefully they stay with you for a long time but at least it gives them like it's kind of a kind of a new career path with this right and so yeah. and, the, and the key thing is you don't have owners out there i mean again i'm sure there are some owners that will get out there and enjoy it you're overestimating my ability to learn if you think I'm going to figure that out. And I don't care how great your training is, Russ, that ain't happening, right? But um, but I'm guessing you do have some owners that do that, but you really kind of need them more, right? Running the business, working yeah. with the customers, building those referral sources in the community, things like that, correct? Yeah, 100% working on the business, not so much in the business. I'm all about leadership by example. All of our business owners, right, they're going to go through the LMS program. They're going to earn their stripes. They're going to show their, their technicians that they know what they're talking about and certainly become a student of the industry. And that's very, very important. But then we want them removing themselves, right? Rinse and repeat, duplicate, replicate. How can we build scale in this business? And it is very linear in nature and it is modular, starting out with a van or two and, and one or two technicians and then having that training module split the amoeba now there's four vans split the amoeba and now we've got six eight vans etc and it all comes down to this whole marketing side of it we call that business model we call it the conserva wheel and there's several injection points where the consumer is going to find us on google right relative to to their need when the student's ready the teacher appears well you know, a lot of times guys are running maybe the out the exterior services of the house they shouldn't be but a lot of times they are right and all of a sudden we're a little slow hey it's snowing i should probably get the system winterized we're not as thoughtful so we're more reactive well we're in the winterization stage right now we're doing tens of thousands of them right so we created a protocol around that we don't just simply winterize the system and move on, commoditize the event, take the money and go. We use compressed air as a diagnostic tool so that water leaks down and a lot of times goes undetected. Compressed air uh, with water bubbles up. It gives us the ability on our, on our iPad and on our app to go, hey, look, I have something to talk to Tim about in the spring when I summarize this system. That on average, that's about an $800 ticket. Now in the, the short off season, if I'm in any part of the North that might have a, a very, very short off season, uh, now at this point, January 10th, 
we're selling seasonal packages, Club Conserva, right, or Conserva Club, getting them on an auto renew. That's getting us out the door for summarizing and winterizing and mid-season inspections. Or it goes around to that free inspection. That's our number one call to action. Breaking down barriers, give us a shot. We're going to run through 50 different points of inspection on your property and give you a report that day that, again, justifies, quantifies, monetizes the experience. And we're all just adding sophistication to a very antiquated and unsophisticated space. Right. Well, and, and no, absolutely. And, and you brought up the next thing I was going to ask about is, you know, well, this is irrigation. This is outside, obviously. Oh, my gosh, this couldn't possibly work in the north because it snows and blah, blah, blah. And again, where was this founded? Oh, wait, Minnesota. Right. But talk about because that that is that, like, I don't know, concern is the right word, but it is something that people should at least have some questions about. So like north northern half um of the world like slows down a little bit but you kind of talked about that some of the winterization things that go on uh for this as well so it slows down but you're also still selling the service you're building those relationships it never you may not be doing as much work physically when there's three feet of snow on the ground or whatever in january in minnesota but you're still exactly. the business is still rolling along Boy, the land of 10,000 lakes where water seems plentiful, right? We're going to come up with a water conservation company during all four days of summer. And it's awesome. Sometimes that falls on a weekend, right? So we summarize a system and winterize it in the same week. Yeah, we have a very short season, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter. Human nature is human nature, right? So we've got people in Florida with a year round 365 days or where you're at, same thing, 365 days, water scarcity. Man, what a great year round business. Boy, I wish I lived a little bit further north because the call to action is so sweet. That, that customer acquisition is unlike any other. Think of it. And again, there's great companies across all the U.S., across the world that, well, let's say garage doors, for example. If you had a franchise or a business that worked on garage doors, and, 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 and if you didn't service your garage door before December 15th when it started to get a hard freeze, that it, you'd have a catastrophic loss, the garage door went open, and you couldn't get out of your garage. Well, that'd be a pretty cool call to action. Well, guess what? We have that built in. Water freezes, systems crack, catastro catastrophic outcomes, right? So a consumer has to make a decision during that six or eight week period of time. I got to winterize that system myself. Most won't, don't know how, don't, don't want to deal with it. I got to hire somebody else to do it. And, uh, or I've got to, I'm going to ignore it and have the catastrophic result of it. Well, guess what they're going to do? They're going to go to Google. They find us. It's awesome. And through that, as I described, is we have this awesome winterization assessment program where we go through, take a look at what's wrong, pre-sell that seasonal package, pre-sell the repairs, taking the revenue in, selling in January, selling in December. And it's crazy. So it's year-round sales, and we're but we're in the ground maybe a little bit of a shorter period of time. You'd be amazed. It's not that much shorter. Right. No, it's a, and and I think the other thing that people forget. And I grew up. I grew up in the in Midwest, but I've been in the South for a long time, right? Like, down in the, we're, I'm spoiled, right? Where like the 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 sun is out. Like I can go outside. I don't know, 400 days out of the year or something. I mean, don't quote my math on that, but but a lot, right? But there's a premium on being outside where where you are, right? And so when it when it is nice and you can get outside, like you don't want it looking like crap, right? You want everything ready to go so you can get out there and enjoy it because there's a shorter shorter window. So I think in sometimes businesses like this, there's, again, like in some ways, weirdly, I almost think it might be better in the North, which most people wouldn't think of because again, I'm, I'm spoiled. We can go outside, you know, like, I had to wear a hoodie today. It's cold. And so like, but I got shorts on, right? So it's like, like it's a real struggle of the winter months down in the South. So when people hear or think of those things and think of the seasonality, it's not nearly as seasonal as, as I think most people think at the beginning, but it really does put that premium on, like you want the, your, your customers, they, they want everything looking as good as possible when they can get out there. Yeah, and I think that's why in Minneapolis and or in Minnesota, this is the greatest, it used to be anyway, the greatest uh, 
you know, number of people per capita that play golf, right? Man, got to get out there, play that game, right? You got to take advantage of it. That's the same thing. Green, lush, healthy lawn, landscape, get the kids playing in the backyard, throwing the football, having fun. And I want it to look great. I moved to Florida four years ago. So very similar. I understand that same concept. Any day, any time you can get outdoors, yeah. but then you can enter in other things. Snowbirds, snowbirds where you are, people that need year round service that are only there half the time or for a few months, right? And there's even that much more attention to detail that needs to be paid to. So across the US, across Canada, I'm telling you, the 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 opportunity for irrigation is is endless. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, so I want to come back to Empower Brands. And so Conserva is part of Empower, and we had uh, Scott Zide on uh, maybe a month or so ago, and like, and as as you well know, he he's amazing. And we had one of our Fran Coach um, team members recently came to an Empower Day, kind of the Meet the Team Day version for you guys. And and she made a comment because I know you're going to talk about culture, and people are going to hear culture and go, yeah, whatever. That's one of those cheesy like corporate buzzwords, like we're going to pin a pin in it and circle back or whatever, right? But she commented when well, she's blown away but one of the things she talked about was longevity and she had spent some time at another franchise brand that is known for the opposite right there's constant churn with this other group and she's like i talked to this person if they've been here for eight years and they're like a newbie and this person's been here for 10 and you're 18 and uh like all and again like people get to empower brands in whatever capacity and like they don't leave, right? So that's an amazing testament to to the to the culture. But talk about some of the things like that really Conserva owners get the added benefit. Like not that there's not enough already with Conserva, but the added benefit of Empower Brands. How does that how does that help your owners? Well, I I'll tell you, it, franchising is is a fantastic vehicle, but it's a scary vehicle if you think about it. Uh, one of the reasons I brought Conserva to Empower Brands was because of the experience, right? Was because it, it, we're not taking a flyer here on people's lives, their four hundred one k investments that, that are turned over to build this business. Uh, we're we're you know these people are investing in experience. We've got what fourteen hundred plus territories across. Uh, the U.S. and Canada, we've got over 250 years combined of experience on the brand team staff. Think of that. Right. At the C-suite level and above, over 250 years of experience. And that speaks volumes, right? We've got over 650 franchisees. We've got 11 brands in the growth mode right now. Six founders are on the team. I'm included in that, right? That are that are that have that type of entrepreneurial experience. And and green fielding these businesses and growing them into massive units, right? We have uh, eight brands that we have either incubated and or are incubating today and uh, four uh, uh, former franchise owners that uh, have, have grown up and become part of the franchisee or part of the franchise or rather. And so culture, first off, just the experience alone, that's what you're investing in. It's, it's not necessarily the product, it's the people. It's always the people. And that's what we keep coming back to is we're people first. And and, and I get that where people are going to be. Yeah, sure. When we say I literally have goosebumps right now <laughs> talking about this, because when you come through our front doors, these beautiful glass doors here in the North Campus or the South Campus, same thing. You literally hear the words welcome home. The first thing you see is is our kitchen if you will right because that's where family congregates right so this massive center island and that's where we had a uh, lunch brought in for everyone today right and and, it, and that's the sense and the feel that we have it's all about you get what you get right every single time and here there's a lot to get it's all about the people you can't make this up this is not the truman show where we're just putting on a little thing but in some hired actors this is people that truly believe they live it they sleep it they they breathe it they want it they it's it's their everything and i love that about our company and and it's just it attracts the best of the best yeah um and and for all the millennials out there that don't get the truman show reference go ahead and google that but that's old people humor today on the podcast with me and Marla. so um no it, it it is and and i know the like you get the shared services you're gonna have 
you may go into a market and you're a conserva owner and there's already an architect or an outdoor lighting or 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 right and and again it's one thing to say it but having watched and like been just a, a huge proponent of empower brands outdoor i know they changed the name a few years ago right but there's always been that like collaborative like you're not an owner here, you're not an owner here. You guys are owners together. And and so and or being able to talk to another owner of your sister brand that's gonna say, like, hey, come on over, Russ. Let me take you to this BNI meeting. Let me introduce you to some people. Let me like it really is that family aspect. And there may be people that listen to this or talk to you guys are like, you know, no, like I don't let and that's and that's okay too. Right. But but when you're talking about that just overwhelming level of support and really like I think I think it was Aaron Zide who said this, but somebody said this to me about Empower is like um, we're like we're huggers. Right. Like um, like and, and probably just Aaron. Right. But um, but again, really that warm, inviting, like we're, we're going to kind of create that that family aspect of this. And and it's one thing to say it, but I've I've never had anybody look at one of the brands that didn't, even if they didn't move forward, didn't come away going, yeah, they're really good people. That's just, maybe that's not the exact place for me, like, or the right brand for me, or I'm not ready to be a franchise owner, but every everybody has come away impressed with the group. And that's good Good yeah. to hear you talk about that from a consistent standpoint as well. And get, and get the goosebumps and 18 years of of being in, being in that, being in that family, that's, that's, that's a long time. That's no joke. So um, love that. Um, Russ, I want to throw one more thing at you and I'll let you go. I try to be respectful of your time, but I'm sure there's a lot of things you could say to this, but is there any other thing that you would want to kind of share with folks today about Conserva and or Empower that maybe we haven't talked about today that you really want to make sure we get across to people? Well, I think there's an opportunity right now uh, across all opportunities, but really across corporate America, across this next generation coming up that um, uh, has grown up around cell phones and have been a little bit more disconnected. And I'll tell you what, I think the people at the core are amazing. And, and what I find consistent across all of our franchise owners, not only at Conserva, but at, at Empower, all, all the 11 brown, uh, brands is that people want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be part of something special. They want they want uh, they want to be recognized. They've got right that on their chest or something, you know, make me feel special, make me feel important. I want to be somebody. I just want to be part of something that is great and a great foundation where I can live in the world of what we call cooperation, cooperating, collaborating, working together. But still, the spirit of competition is alive and it's well And recognition to me is is overlooked in most places today, right? Recognition, I believe, if done thoughtfully and done properly is everything. People want the opportunity to get across that finish line and feel great, whether they're competing against their own numbers. We happen to do that stuff internally, right? We have magnificent milestones where your first 10,000 of revenue in a month, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to our record at 705,000 in a single month. It's crazy. And, uh, but all that type of stuff, right? How can I get recognized for doing what's right? How can I get recognized in my community? for being a thought leader, bringing something to the table, such as conserva, that's all about conserving the earth's precious and, and very scarce uh, resource and water, right? 40 to 60% savings on, a, on an irrigation system at the residential level is impactful. At the commercial level is meaningful. At the municipal level is a game changer. And just think of that to be able to walk across, you know, put your head on the pillow at night knowing you, you're, you're creating something that's sustainable, you're creating something that you can build it to sell it, to pass it along as legacy, bring your family involved, and yet your head's on the pillow at night saying, I'm doing what's right by the earth as well. Yeah. I, you can't paint a better picture. And so that's what, I, again, I, I'm, if, you, if there's one last thing I would ever say is no matter, no matter who you are, where you came from, if you come to check out Conserva Irrigation, I promise you, we might be sixth on the list. We might be 18th on the list. <laughs> you get one opportunity to spend some time with our team, 
I guarantee we're going to be number one because it isn't about the irrigation. It's about the marketing. It's about the experience. It's about the impact and the fact that we all want to suit up on Friday night, get back in the competition mode, take it to the to the streets and understand that you're you're competing against the unsophisticated folks where you can run up the score and make a generational difference in your wealth strategy to your family. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I love it. If only you had a little passion about this, Russ. I mean, like, <laughs> oh awesome, my goodness. Right, this is getting right down to it. We've got one more guy. We've got our buddy, a little shout out to Umberto Manzano. Umberto and Maria Manzano, North Oklahoma City, man. We're super excited for them. They're going to be our 16th watch wear. All the, the other five this year, we have six new ones coming, and that's when you get a million in revenue, right? You get the conserva watch. You get to tell what time it is finally. And so he happens to be over at training for cross-branded, right? He's training for Canopy, and I'm like, Umberto, Last night we had a holiday party. I'm like, Umberto is going to be able to tell the time, right? $34,517.38 hard cents. He has to get across the line by December 31. And I know they're going to do it. But again, another great form of recognition. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, um, and, and congrats to you too, personally, because I know this is, this is, this is your baby and I know how hard you have worked and how long you've worked on it. And I'm um, just so excited for your success and conservas and i thank you so much for coming on to talk to us today tim thanks again and congrats to you as well for just an awesome legacy that you're setting up here you got a great uh a team that you're you continue to build which is fantastic to see and, and again what a great business model you have as well so thanks for having us and thanks for highlighting both conserva and empower brands my my pleasure thanks so much Thanks again to Russ for joining us today from Conserva Irrigation. And as always, we'd like to thank our loyal podcast listeners uh, for tuning into the Franchising 101 series. We hope this helps enlighten you on some of the amazing opportunities that are out there. If you are ready to learn a little bit more, please reach out to us, francoach.net, franchising101podcast.net. Again, we are always.net. Don't fall for the imitators. If you're ready to talk, you're going to talk straight to, to the old ball guy here and, and myself. Um, and then check us out on all the social media sites. Don't forget, if you like to read that crazy thing people sometimes used to do in the olden days, franchisingnews.net. Uh, tons of amazing articles, uh, both from, from our team and from other great resources in franchising. Uh, but when you are ready, reach out to us. There's never any fee for our service. We're here to help you get educated on franchise ownership, and then ready for you to find your best franchise and help create your better tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in everyone. And we look forward to talking to you next week.